Hi everybody, welcome back to my porch. Again, this is Becky's Artie. I live here in Western Kentucky and I'm here this morning to share an amazing devotional with you. I hope you'll join in with me. Today our scripture reading comes from Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 15. And Ephesians 6, 10 through 15 says this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. That is Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 15. Our devotional says, from the Morning Glories book, My oldest brother is a minister of the gospel. One Sunday morning when I was visiting, he preached on the whole armor of God. Like others in his congregation, I had heard sermons on that topic before. But never had I been so impressed with the one word in the text. Stand. It was not so much the word itself, but the preacher's comment on that word that was so unforgettable to me. Notice what God says, stand. He does not say, understand. Just as explicit as the directions concerning donning the armor piece by piece is this injunction to do nothing but stand. But God, you may argue, surely there's something I can do. We've heard these verses. Many of us have memorized them, but we are a people of action. We're not good at standing still. How often I've murmured as I've had to wait for something or somebody, I've no background for waiting around doing nothing. If we just have to stand, we want to know at least the why of it. God does not have to explain to us his creatures. We can fuss and fume and tap our toes impatient over not being able to understand the stand comment yet irks us. But God does not give commands in order to frustrate us. Someday we will know all the answers. Meanwhile, we can learn the lesson of trusting in the dark. In some specific instances, the Lord has brought my brother's insightful sermon to my mind to pass on to someone who needed such consolation. A surgeon friend, for instance, had taken extraordinary measures to save a young accident victim, even enlisting the willing aid of the U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. C. Everett Koop. But having done all, our friend saw the boy die and was having to struggle over, why, God? For him, the early morning, the words, stand therefore, came like a balm from heaven. It will always be so when having done all, we let God be God and heed his injunction to us to stand even when we cannot understand. I thought it a very poignant word for us this morning when the vast majority of us across the United States and across the world are having to stand or sit still in order to protect the vulnerable in our population. We don't understand why other than it's a virus and it's highly contagious. But why has this all happened? Why has this all taken place? Why is it now that so many of us who would love to be able to gather together to worship together can't? We can see each other through Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, whatever technology it is that we're using, but we're having to stand 
or sit still in our homes. Many of us are asking why. Why God? But he doesn't always tell us, like our devotional reading this morning, that we get to understand. And one thing he does tell us is that we need to stand, trust in him, and him alone. We're going to have why God questions, and we're not always going to have the answers. But the important thing is that you understand that God is standing there with you. That he's hanging on to you. And sometimes we need to just stand and spend time with him. So are you doing that this morning? Are you taking the time to just be with God? Or are you continuing to fret and to try to do when right now the best thing we can do is to just to stand still? I pray you have a blessed day. I love you. But more importantly, God loves you. Bye-bye.